Uh, okay, so PT Argentina. All right. So I think the time should be already half past ten. Okay, so I can start, I think. <coughs> uh, so, uh, so morning again. Um, I'm Hui Wing. Um, I'm a PhD student in Yoho's group in Finland, and it's a joint work from uh, our uh, with our group and uh, uh, Sebastian's group in Germany. So it's about metabolite identification and uh, uh, combine the fragmentation tree informations by the uh, multiple multiple kernel learning. Okay, so what is the metabolite? So uh, you relate small molecules and it has uh, different functions like structure, signaling, exceptures. And for example, uh, well, I think you all just had it in the coffee break. Here is, it's actually caffeine. So it's very important metabolite uh, in our daily life, I think. So uh, really the identification of the metabolite uh, is a central task uh, in metabolomics. Oh, shit. I think I touched something. So um, the identification of metal light is really a process. You start with the uh, uh, sampling, you have some biological sample, and you probably will put it into the, uh, through the mass spectrometer, and you get, get your peaks, the mass spectros, and you do the data analysis, and then you identify the metal light. And uh, usually, I think, in this setting, tandem uh, ten, uh, tandem MS is a really uh, uh, used a lot technology for identify the metabolite. So you have uh, your samples, you go through the MS one, you, you're you're focused on on the compound you are interested in, and you go through again to the MS, and then you fragmented the compounds, and then you get it get uh, the fragmentation of the compounds you detected uh, in your mass spectrometers. So um, our problem is that given the uh, MSMS spectral here, uh, what is actually the, uh, the molecule? Uh, it corresponds. And traditionally, uh, the methods people were using, uh, they are often just comparing the mass spectral peak by peak and find the most similar one. Okay, so what's our way of doing it? So the key point in our method is actually the fingerprint, the molecular fingerprint. So what is actually the molecular fingerprint? So it's actually just a bit vector tells you whether this molecule has uh, this certain properties or not. So like here we have a substructure uh, fingerprint. So this is, our, this is the molecule itself. And we have different substructure uh, in, in molecules. And if this, mo if this molecule has this kind of structure, we will set the corresponding bit to one except true, and then we have a zero bit, zero, uh, zero one binary bit vector. And we have been proposed this uh, approach two years ago. So the first is that we, we predict the molecular fingerprint uh, from the tandem MSMS. And uh, then after the prediction, we just comparing the uh, predict uh, fingerprint uh, with, with, the, with, with the compounding database and we found the most similar one uh, and take it at the, at the, uh, at the identification. So uh, in this paper, we, we propose to, to, to add actual information uh, besides the uh, MSMS spectrum. So uh, that is actually a fragmentation tree uh, proposed by our uh, collaborator. Um, so what is the fragmentation tree? So you have a, you have a uh, MS2 spectra on the left. And now you, you're trying to use this tree to simulate the fragmentation process uh, which, which has happened in the mass spe uh, spectrometers. So you start uh, with, uh, uh, for each peak, you have a mass for the peak. You'll find the molecular formulas, probably a set of molecular formulas uh, sharing the same mass with, with the peaks. And then you Okay, so now for each of the peak here, we have a set of molecular formulas corresponding to it. And now we are trying to connect 
uh, the nodes, or, or let's say the, uh, the molecular formulas. So um, how do you do that? Um, you start with, with the highest mass peak, that will be the root here. And then <coughs> you probably will do, okay, you, you want to find a molecular formula, which is actually a subset of the molecular formula in the root. Um, and also that you, you have some scoring strategies uh, on the edges, of which probably here. So some, some edges are more plausible and some are not. So by doing that, you actually have this constraint, uh, well, optimization problem that you want to find the tree, uh, maximize the score on the edge, and in the end, you will find the, the, the best tree at the, uh, at the fragmentation tree. So each, each node in the tree will correspond to one peak in the spectral, and each edge here will co corresponding to the loss between the peaks. So this is the fragmentation tree we are going to uh, use. So now we have the spectrum and the, fragment and the fragmentation trees. Uh, so how do we combine the information? Uh, in this paper, we propose to using the uh, multiple, kernel, uh, multiple kernel learning approach to do that. So we have a kernel function for the, uh, for the spectra. We have a kernel function for the trees. And uh, then we use the multiple kernel learning to combine the information in the kernels. And we do somehow hopes uh, this uh, this by this way, by using this way, we can improve the prediction of the uh, fingerprint. Okay, so um, what's the kernels? Um, so we first have a look of the what's the kernel function for the mass spectra. Uh, we have two mass spectra. We model each mass spectra as a uh, mixture um, of two-dimensional Gaussian distribution. So uh, each the peak here will be uh, have the, this one dimensional one dimension as a mass to charge ratio and the intensity and it, it will be a two dimensional uh, gaussian distributions so a mass spectra will be a mixture of gaussian uh, distributions so when you comparing the two mass spectra you are comparing really a two mixtures of uh, distributions and um, we're using this uh, probability product kernel proposed by Yebra quite a few years ago uh, to, to, to define the kernel function. Okay, so how do we uh, compute the kernel function on trees? Okay, so we have spectra on, on here and we have the corresponding trees of, of spectra. Uh, the first and simplest way is that we can just take all the nodes we have seen in the data set as they ex uh, explicit features. So. Here, okay, we, we, we will have a feature vector of uh, whether a, a certain node appears in the tree or not. So, okay, so on the for the tree on the left, we have a, this um, a yellow node uh, in the tree, so, oh, probably it's not yellow, it's light yellow somehow. So then we set the corresponding bit to one, and we have a black node here we set to one, and we don't, we don't have the, let's say, red, and with that to zero, and by this way we can construct uh, explicit uh, feature vectors uh, of the nodes of the trees. And what we can also do is that um, uh, instead of uh, putting zero or ones, we put intensities uh, on the feature uh, on, at, at the value in the features. Um, so, uh, to short summary, we have uh, two uh, kernel functions. Let's say two feature vectors uh, on the nodes of the trees. And then we just take the dot product of the feature vector to, to compute the kernels. And uh, besides the nodes, we also have the edge on the trees. Uh, we have different edge, different loss between the peaks uh, to, remind, to remind you. So, okay, we just similarly, we just see whether we have seen certain, a certain kind of edge appeared in the tree or not. Then we have this loss binary features. And similarly, we can take the, the child node of the edge, well, the intensity of the child, child node of the edge, uh, to put it here in, in, in the features, uh, as the loss intensity features. What we can also do, we count how many edge appeared in the tree. Like here, we have two yellow, we, that we set to two, and if we don't have to, we set to zero. And in this way, we have these loss uh, features on the trees. 
And what we can also do is that we're considering uh, the root loss, which I, by root loss I mean the, the, if, uh, the implicit edges between the root and every other node. Similarly, we have binary case, we have intensity case. And by, by doing that, we have, okay, another set of feature vector, we take a dot product, we have another kernels. And uh, this is a different set of features on trees. We call it path kernels. So basically it's counting how many common paths, how many common subtrees, and how many paths of length two that the tree shares. Like here we have, uh, okay, for the length two path, we have this uh, orange yellow path, which, okay, so it's, we, ha we only have this uh, one common path length of length two. That's why we only uh, count at the one. And we have also have this uh, common subtree counting. So in this case, we have a uh, one common subtree. All right, so uh, we have the kernels ready. Um, if you actually count, we have actually 12 kernels ready uh, to use. And then we combine the kernel by uh, multiple kernel learnings. So what is, uh, well, the multiple kernel learning basically just trying to learn the ways for different kernel matrix and combine it, and somehow hope this combined kernel matrix can improve the fingerprint prediction. So in this paper, we consider three approach, approaches. Um, so the center alignment case, the quadratic combination of kernels, and the uh, LP norm on the ways. Uh, I will just give you some uh, simple introduction for each of them. So the first is the center alignment case. Uh, to do that, you first have to co uh, compute your target kernel matrix. So you have your fingerprint output matrix, Y. It's just uh, the number of samples and number of fingerprints you have. And you time it uh, by its transpose, you have a target kernel matrix. So why this target kernel matrix is important is that, okay, so the, in practice, uh, the target, if you're using the target kernel matrix, you, you plug it back to the SVM or the other kernel-based approach, you, you always have this perfect, almost perfect uh, performance. Somehow, if, you can, if your kernel matrix are closer, as close as to, uh, to, the, uh, to the target kernel matrix, you are expected to have good result. So, okay, so now we have the kernel, target kernel matrix, we have our individual kernel matrix, and we align them by align, I mean compute some score to indicate how well they are, they are aligned uh, by these equations here. It's just a simple uh, flop news product divided by the flop news norm, uh, divided by the flop news norm times the other flop news norm. And in the end, you have this alignment score, uh, W1 to W12, and you combine the kernel matrix by that weight. So this is actually align. So align f is actually uh, taking the different weights uh, as a variable to, opti to, opt uh, to optimize. Uh, somehow uh, they put, put the weights into a convex, or well, they're considering the convex combination of the kernel matrix. Uh, and in the end, they somehow hope they, they combined kernel matrix are uh, having the uh, highest alignment score of the target kernel matrix instead of uh, doing this alignment indiv uh, individually. So uh, another way that we have different kernel matrix, we're considering all the pairwise combination of the kernel matrix. Uh, so basically we have uh, all the pairwise combinations. Oh, okay. So by pairwise combination, I mean it's actually the um, element-wide element product. So by this equation. So uh, we now actually have a, a new set of kernel matrix, um, a much larger uh, kernel matrix set uh, to, to use. And in the end, and, uh, after that, we, we combine the different, uh, uh, and the, the, we combine the kernel matrix in the new set uh, by, by, multiple, uh, by the simple, uh, uh, by the same approach, uh, uh, add it. So uh, the third way we consider here is, uh, okay, so we have the weights. We, we put different constraints, the norm constraint on the weights. Uh, we consider different norm, L2, 3, 4, 5. 
So the intuition that you have higher norm constraints, um, the, the weights are denser and denser. So here it's like it actually shows, okay, you have a very high norm constraint on the kernel weights. You have very dense combination of kernel matrix. So uh, to show some experiments and results, uh, so we first see some results of how well we can predict the fingerprint. So we have the tree spectra, we want to see how well we can predict the fingerprint. So we have a, a 178 compounds uh, downloaded from Metalin and uh, another 402 uh, from Methbank. And we have a, a 528 fingerprints in total to predict and we are using five-fold cross-validations. So this is a um, bar plot of each, in, uh, each individual thing, uh, kernels, how well they can predict the fingerprint. So we have a dark gray as accuracy and a light gray as F1. So um, it's easy to see that the node binary features uh, actually perform very well comparing to the others. And we have uh, now have to look at uh, how well the different multiple kernel, uh, mu different multiple kernel learning approach behaves. Um, so, yes, they they almost the same. So, the, as, as, as well, this has been witnessed by a lot of uh, application of this multiple kernel learning methods. They, they sometimes very hard to select which are better or not. They are very close to each other. But anyway, we get improved over the best individual kernels. That's, so this is a node binary. We have all the other multiple, multiple kernel learning approach. Also, this uni MKL is just, you have the same weights for every kernel matrix. All right. So all these uh, multiple kernel learning approach outperform the best individual kernels. So you have the fingerprint prediction you want to identify um, what is the, the metabolite. Um, so now we see some results, uh, whether how well we can identify the, uh, the, uh, the metabolite from the fingerprint. So we have, a, um, use, we have, been, we have used the fingerprint, the predict fingerprint to search the CAC database and we see of, of course, you hope, uh, okay, you have fingerprints, you search CAC, and you will have a candidate set, uh, which um, uh, you, can, you, can, you can rank them by, by the fingerprint matching score. You somehow hope uh, the, the correct uh, metabolite ranked as high as possible. So let's say, uh, okay, you have uh, this uh, uh, line F learned fingerprints. Um, uh, it can identify 40% of the metalin data sets to be rank one. So you correctly identify 40% of your data. And so here we can see uh, the, the improvements in the fingerprint prediction can result in the improvements in the identifications. Uh, actually a lot. If you see, we have more than doubled, uh, doubled uh, rank one uh, identifications uh, than the old approach. So to conclude, so we presented a uh, combination of uh, fragmentation tree models and the kernel methods, and uh, we get uh, the improvements a lot. Uh, we get this fingerprint prediction improvements a lot by using multiple kernel learnings. And uh, for, identif for identification, we, uh, the AlignF method can correctly identify 45% of the spectra in the metallic data set. Uh, when you're searching the CAC. And we actually tested the, the same prediction of the fingerprint on PubCam. Um, so PubCam is a much larger database. Probably now it has more than 50 million compounds. So we can, if you're only considering 2D structure uh, identification, by that I mean, okay, when, you have a, when you're comparing compounds, you're only considering the 2D structures. If the 2D structure is the same, you take it as the identifications. So by, by, by using that criterion, uh, we can correctly identify 
of our metadata data sets to be rank one. So um, that will be all the contents of my talk. And in the end, I'd like to thank you for your attention. And you can download the code from uh, this link in GitHub. And thanks. <laughs>